Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about how to integrate velocity or acceleration equations for AP Physics C mechanics problems. This is a really crucial lesson. You will for sure see questions like this on your test in either multiple choice or FRQ format or both. So this is a really important set of skills to get down. Let's first take a glance at the problem. I don't want to read the whole thing at you. You can pause and read it if you like. But a couple things to note, notice that it's a very simple equation to start with. And essentially what we're doing is we're going to be going from acceleration to velocity and velocity to position at the end of this. So that's what we're doing. And in general, I do want to quickly talk through some of the major ideas here in terms of how we go about doing this. I do want you to think through for a moment. If we want to go from position, we can to velocity and we can go from velocity to acceleration. And we can also go backwards. So today we're going to be going backwards from acceleration to velocity and velocity to position. In general, you could take the derivative of a position function with respect to time to get instantaneous velocity. And you could take the derivative of dv dt to get instantaneous acceleration. So just a quick summary here. Now when we're going backwards like we are today, you can take the integral, or just simply integrate. And to get the velocity equation for an indefinite integral. And you can do something similar going from velocity to position. If you take the integral of velocity to position, if you have a definite integral, then you'll get the change in position. And if you use an indefinite integral, you will get just the position function itself. So let me go ahead and just show you how to do this problem. That's all background for understanding this. It is crucial background for understanding this. But we're going to start, I always like to start, with thinking about the relationship between acceleration and velocity. We're going to go from 1 to 2 and 2 to 3 over here. So first 1 to 2, so to speak. We could say we're thinking about that relationship with acceleration and velocity. In my mind, I often say, well, I know acceleration is dv dt. And so the derivative of velocity with respect to time. Now, what we can do from here is if we multiply both sides of the equation by dt, what that's going to do is cancel this out. So what are we left with? We're left with a dt is equal to dv. All right, I'm going to switch the order of this and also bring it down to the lower left so I leave myself some room here. So I'm going to say dv is equal to a dt. Now, at this point, what we can do is take the integral of both sides. If we do that, we're left with just v on the left-hand side. And on the right, we got to plug in what our acceleration equation is. In this case, it's 12t dt. Now, if you ever get confused and forget the integration rule, take a look here. This is on your equation sheet. In other words, if you get to the test and you just kind of freak out or blink out and forget, you can just glance at this on the back side of your equation sheet. It has some reminders about some of the basic calculus stuff that you're going to need to know to be able to do this stuff. Okay, so for this integral right here, it's an indefinite integral that we're running right now. And if we do that, we end up with 12t squared over 2 plus c, all right, plus that constant. Now, this is a function. It's a general function because we're running an indefinite integral here. So we could say v of t is equal to 6t squared plus c. Well, we already know something, and this is where we use this information here, where it says if the particle starts from rest so that its speed and position are zero when time equals zero. So what do we know? We know something very specific. We know that at time equals zero, that if we set our time equal to zero, we know that this is equal to zero. Why? Because the problem told us that. So we could say essentially 0 is equal to 0 plus c. Well, then therefore we can say that 0 is equal to c, or a constant of integration. It's important to be able to do this for this problem. Basically, I'm doing this to prove that you can kind of ignore the c for this problem, but in general you want to get in the habit of writing it because that's what you should be doing if you're dealing with an indefinite integral. What we're going to do for the second step going from 2 to 3 is we're going to use a definite integral, and part of the reason for that is because they give us our time that we're going to work with. So let's go about doing that. Very similar to what we did previously, what do we know about the relationship with velocity and x? Well, I know that velocity is equal to dx 
dt. I know that velocity is the derivative of position with respect to time, you could say. And just like before, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by dt. And if we do that, then this will cancel. And I'm just going to slightly change the order here and put things in a little more friendly viewing terms. And so we'll say v dt. That's what we're left with right here. So we could say, all right, well, dx, let's take the integral of both sides of v dt is over here. Now, at this point, we need to be careful. We're going to be doing a definite integral here, so we want to be careful with this. A definite integral of dx is actually going to be a delta x. It's actually going to be a change in position. And if you don't believe me, you can think of it as x initial, and this is going to be x final. That's one way to think about it. Well, what is that? Well, that's going to be delta x, right? And if we think about our definite integral on the right-hand side, we're going to have evaluated from 0 to 2. And we also need to sub in. We said our equation was 6t squared. Notice we're ignoring the plus 0 because there's no need to have it. And so you could say delta x is equal to 6t to the third over 3 evaluated from 0 to 2. So our delta x is going to be equal to, notice this cancels to 2. So we're going to have 2 times 2 to the third third minus 2 times 0 to the third that cancels out to 0. So what is this? Delta x is equal to 2 times 8. So delta x is going to be equal to 16. We need to now add in units. That makes sense. That's going to be in meters. If you take a look, our correct answer is actually going to be b. So that's how to go about thinking about these problems here. This is a really crucial lesson to be able to understand how to do this type of thing. I've done screencasts on an entire year of physics, as well as most of the concepts for AP Physics C Mechanics. If you have any questions or comments down below, please let me know. And I hope you all have a great day. Take care.